Okay, so today topic we just planning to discuss with hive and hive introductions, and we are planning to go with some reverse engineering model with understanding about the architecture and all. So first, going with the uh, uh, theory part, we would like to go with some practical, and then we will be compare with our architecture and all with that whatever we have done with the practical thought. Okay, that's the plan. So just raise me any questions if you have in the middle. Just stand mute and ask me immediate. Okay, so what do you think about Hive first? We must know the basics. We will be providing some basic inputs and we will be going to compare it. So anyone, what do you think about Hive? What is the use of that? I don't want yes. to go with the architecture level. What is the use case? Why we need to use this? That's such things we must know. So, yeah, please. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, it gives the map notice concept. Mm. Okay. It runs with map reduce. It's not only map reduce, so it will be running with test engine as well, as well as the spark engine. We can use all three. Right? And then What else? Uh, we can create the schema for the table. So, mm, yeah, why we need to create the schema for the table? For uh, we we don't have the structure or like uh, we don't have the data types for the data stored in the stored in CSV or something like. Mm. So that's why we are creating schema and data type. We are defining the data type also. Yeah, actually, Hive is a data warehouse tool to pass structured data on top of your Hadoop. Okay. But we don't have the data types uh, defined in that. So yeah. It, it, it will consider it as a text only. Yeah, correct. How this uh, Hive, was, that a schema is going to be stored in the backend? It is How like the data a, is processed. Yeah, and also it is like a traditional uh, database, right? It's not a traditional traditional database. All those, all will follow with the Azure property. It doesn't support with the Azure property. As of now, it's supporting Azure property, but there is some limitations is available. So it's not a traditional, but we can handle using this hybrid with data warehousing concepts. So it's mostly support for OLAP. Okay. Yeah, it provide analysis. It's provide a parallelism look like. Yeah, concurrency, multi-threading, we can go with that. So it's okay. So handle huge data. Okay, everything else. So schema on read, it's not only for schema on writer. So you cannot handle the data internally. It is just holding that schema about whatever you're creating the tables and the, the particular table column references and the schema type and the partition references. This only can load it. So that's called schema on read. Okay, so schema on read is you have only the schema, it doesn't have the file. So, where the file is going to be stored, it is a separate storage layer is available that is controlled with your Hadoop clusters. So, on top of this Hadoop cluster, it's just going to be read the data and do some analysis. That's it. Okay, any other points? What I understood schema separately, the tables content separately, it will be there. Uh, data separate on top of the data schema only just apply it and read whenever it's required. It doesn't hold the data by itself. 
if suppose it's holding the data everything can control by himself right it doesn't when uh, to concept is available in table creation in the internal table and external table yeah, that that external sorry, internal table we are going to create as a user level so we will be going to see that example in the next further two to three minutes so before that i just provide this inputs for your references so actually i doesn't have a full access with your data only schema whenever i am going to read the data at the time it just applying those schema and read as it is got it because usually we are going to insert the values through the schema itself the insert into the particular table itself only already we create the table that a uh, table structure and all that is uh, what are the data types we are going to feed and all that. then after that only the data in, uh, values into uh, field in the in the table itself uh, what i can understand from you are the separate uh, schema separately the table separately well uh, we will go with the examples okay, okay. Okay, so there is a two types types of tables available. Let me go into create a manage table right now. Okay, here is a slider is available. So when I record, you can go to the point directly from here. So let me go into create a database. What is there? Let's see end of the line. Three, three database, database name. Okay, it should come here, right? This is correct, I guess. Okay. So now I'm going to create a table. So it's a normal managed table. We don't want to declare any special keywords just to create a table that's enough and then we can provide the table name 31st dot demo okay id integer name as a string so here i'm declaring that uh, column name with its data type and then i'm going to write the it i don't mention anything other row format delimited anything i just create the table as it is right now Okay, so now table is available. Okay, first e done. Okay, so now I can see these references. What is the column? What is the table name? Sorry, what is the column name I just declared? It's ID column integer, name column as a string, and then database is where it is persist, and who is the one of this table, and when this table has created, and what is the location. This location you can note that this is loaded by default with your Hadoop. Am I right? You will not be located any other places. You will not be declared any any of the spaces by default. There is a default warehouse directory is available. It is just to point that data warehouse directly and write the data inside to that. This is happening. Got it? If suppose I would like to see this in terminal. I don't have any data. So now what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to open a hive shell.
okay now i just located table is listed so now i'm going to insert the data as it is insert into table values id and okay column names and then values i would like to give some values one comma i just provide chitra okay so right first i will write the data let's see that it's just started the back end some algorithm and it is trying to insert the data this is create as a job right now this job we can see in our yarn as well okay so the same job is created and you can see the references and what is the script we just execute how this job is going to be run whether it's a map it is related or spark related that information what is the queue it was involved and what is the start time what is the state of this job or how much resource it was allocated all the information we can note it from there now it just started and trying to insert the data in the back end. You can see this job by default will be running with the map reduce. So map and reduce operation is just started and running the back end to load the data. Now data insert successfully. So select star from a demo. I can see one comma chitra here. The same if you would like to see here. Okay, I can see the data. Now I just go to the header path, the same path because this is the default path, but I'm trying to see this information in internal. Now it just created here, you can see this one. This specific path, the file has to be created. Before I was trying with that, unfortunately I didn't get any data. Now whatever the data I have, it's not that I can see here. I just going to be read this data. Okay, so one chitra. This is data we just write it uh, right. So only one file has generated. This file is hold whatever we have mentioned as an input references. So in this example, you just noted whatever the data you are trying to insert, that's by default just hold with your Hadoop and Roman, not Hive and Roman. Hive just point on the top of this path and read the data based on your column, whatever you mentioned, with its schema type. If the schema is not matched, you cannot read the data successful. Okay, now let me go into insert one more record for our practical references. I may be going to mention Avinaya. The second insertion script is just generating another one map to algorithm the job and it is running. So on the first job insertion script is completed successfully. Now second job is started. And now it is in running state. Okay, now it's insert. Let me go into read the data. So again, one and two Chitra, sorry, one Chitra, two Abhinaya. So I would like to only select the names first. So Chitra, Abhinaya, this is the names I can see here. This is much better for clarity. Okay, two records I can see successful. Gee. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when to. run that uh, high, you, uh, back end, what are the terminal has to run? Well, uh, that's we are going to discuss in some time. That's a reverse engineering concept. First, we will see the practical example, right? Then I will be going to compare with the architecture. Just two minutes. Okay. okay. So now this file has generated and stored in the back end. You can see the files. Before it was only one. And now it is two files is available. Okay. 
So like that, the data is going to be stored with our Hadoop environment only. We are trying to access those files via Hive and apply with our schema, column references or schema. So that's the reason it's called as a schema on a read. On top of the file, it is just going to be read the data as it is. Maybe I'm going to use star here. So inside to this path, I'm trying to read this file. I can see one Chitra to Abhinaya. Okay. So till now, any question with the practical example? Uh, Dinesh Darshan here. Yeah. So what is the difference between Hive and Hadoop? Hadoop, the purpose of we are using to read or uh, uh, any cluster we are creating on that? Hadoop, just to storing the data. Okay. That's it. Whatever you are having the data, right? Everything just stored with the replication factor and all. So we are going to see some Hadoop comments in later. At the time, I will give you some more inputs on that. So only storage purpose, we are using the Hadoop. On Hadoop ecosystem is high. We are trying to approach that Hadoop data on top of them based on our use case references. So those data I know very well. That's a CSV file format I just loaded. I want to split up based on the comma separator or special character separator, and I want to read it. While reading the data, I want to compare with our more normal data type. So our first idea is always it should be read as an integer. Another one is, uh, what is the record? Uh, second column, name as a string data type that I want to apply. If suppose the data is not matched properly, I cannot read it. Let's example, I'm going to copy this data in local and do some changes and write it again. The same path I can write, okay? So I just copy this data in my local. This is, will be available here, I guess. Yeah, this is the file. I'm going to edit this file. So two and Abhinaya is available. I'm going to add, I just go with alphabetical mostly. Okay, Amrit. So I just change the value. Instead of, I'm trying to change Amrit. The same, I just provide here as well. Okay, so it should first should be a, integer column but by mistakenly i just provide amrit this is what i am doing for understanding purpose just save it i rename the file with test file okay this file i am planning to write into this path using hdfs put command Source is here, test file into destination path. Okay, file now it's available. Okay, file is just stored in the same path as it is. Now I'm planning to read it. You can see. First two column properly retrieved and third data ID column doesn't meet the schema so that it just mentioning NAN. NAN is means not a number or null value, whatever just declare like that only. So are there Chitra Abhinaya This is matching with your schema and with the data type so we can extract the data. This is we cannot do that. This is called a schema on read method. We are trying to extract the data while applying, sorry, extracting the data, we are trying to apply our column name with its data type, wherever matching that only we just extracted from here. This is happening. Got it? Yeah, Dinesh, uh, if you want to alter any particular data, so through Hadoop, uh, it works on the location path. Is it correct? Uh... No, you have to use some update commands also, but you have to enable some asset properties. So one, because update and uh, delete, that are is a kind of, uh, how can I say, 
uh, acd related op- operations so that directly will not be support but we can achieve with uh, some uh, property changes and all but as you said is correct whenever i need to do some changes in the back end i may be going to replace the file but if it is a small file we can do it if it is a huge large file we cannot edit it it will be taking long time and we cannot change all the values at run time right so what we can do we are using to write the data again as a new file and we will be compare and fetching the host data based on the timestamp values it's a kind of ranking what is the latest file that we can extract it that's a easy way okay okay uh, so then is uh, so hmm. here uh, schema means uh, the uh, name of the column and the data type should should match right so this is what schema or uh, that is schema that is schema okay yeah meaning okay. uh, meta metadata only right yeah metadata here the people few of them is calling us a schema okay. so okay. in rdbms oracle other other databases the schema is a kind of data mart here yeah. the people are calling we don't have any option like a data mart here so the call the column reference the metadata we are calling as a schema here that's it okay thank you because in our in oracle or uh sql server or teradata you may be create one schema for particular operation accounting is a kind of separate schema we are following it customer is a separate schema we are following it on those path we are trying to write all our database references and table references but here it is nothing like that so we just only following with the database with the respect to our tables that's it and by default some of them is you, you may hear about dbo schema dbo database object so that is also they are calling it a schema but it's related to rdbms okay any other question guys as we will go and see with some architecture Manish, I have a question. Uh, yeah, please. Uh, being uh, very uh, new to this big data, uh, I just wanted to know whether I uh, understood in uh, understanding in the right way. Like uh, till now, you, you you thought something right. Uh, my understanding is like you are creating a table in a hive and inserting a data, uh, and then those data are storing in the Hadoop. Am I right? Correct. Okay. O- okay. And uh, every column is uh, is converted into a file because you are mentioning a file file. Uh, what is the mean of file? Is that a single record? A single row is converting into a file, or else uh, what? Finish? No, this is a sing that file right. Each record we are trying to read it. That's called the serialization. We will be going to discuss that in later. It's okay. a little bit advanced. So later session, once all the file has to be created with that respective file format, we will be going to discuss that. Don't worry. But uh, that's that concept is called uh, serialization concept. Okay. So okay. how we are going to read the data internally into Hadoop and Hive environment. So based on the each column with its data type, we are trying to choose and read it. What was happening in the backend? Okay, that we will be going to see it. So, as of now, uh, what you said is correct. Whatever I am trying to write the data through Hive, that just going to be stored into internally Hadoop and ROM at one day. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other question, guys? Gee, uh, what I can understand uh, is it they say from this example I am telling you is it correct or not? Please tell me. That is before we have used the PHP admin that sorry. Uh, vam server exam server that time that uh, vam server includes mysql mariadb data server in, database server inclu- includes itself uh, that time we used that uh, php my admin uh, we used the uh, that uh, whatever used the uh, high related data in php my admin the uh, database data will be stored in uh, database server the like this way uh, we are using node uh, node tech technology node technology way we are using hadoop is uh, Server like this, uh, high is a BHP my admin. Like this way, we, I can understand. Is it correct? No uh, server, uh, it's close to right, but uh, uh, it's not exactly same. Maybe no, no. That is uh, well, uh, before it. Uh, it uh, if, uh, that is I. I if, now you are using MR here. I can understand that uh, internal terminology, but uh, different uh, di- uh, comparative comparative is the same way. Uh, but uh, ter- technical wise, it will be advanced uh, Hadoop. Am I correct? uh no there is some confusion available maybe i will show that architecture 
Mm. Now we will compare with the architecture and we'll come back and answer your question. Or you may be understand based on the architecture flow as well. Don't worry about it. Just two minutes. Okay. Now okay. we are going to discuss about the architecture. Meanwhile, enter to that internal architecture concept. Any other questions? No, no. Others? Yeah, I, I have a question. Yeah, finish. please. Actually, uh, why we call this as a managed table? Just why we are calling us? Manage table in this table. Uh, that's uh, two types of table we can create. It. That we are going to discuss. It. As of now, I just create one table and I am trying to write the data. Where this data is available, where this column references is available. That we just discussed and how it's combined together. That's what we just discussed. Next, we have table type. So this is a table. Okay. So in this place, we are going to discuss all this. Don't worry. Just give me time. Time. Uh, yeah, sometime. Sure. Sure. Okay. So oh, okay. okay, you will be coming in the reverse. Right. No, just I just create the table. What was happened that environment? Now I'm going to compare what is the backend process. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's my motive. Okay. Let me go with the architecture. I'll be going to play this architecture, so you'll get oh. some idea. Sir, one more thing. Hi. Yeah, just a minute. I just started. So whatever the comment you submitted, it's just going to be created with the driver. Driver going to be submit into our metadata references. From metadata references only, Hive Engine is trying to read all the information. What are the column name and data type, everything you just declare, right? That's only available in metadata. That's read and apply with your Hive Engine. And then this is going to be converted as a jobs to Yarn. So I just request to Yarn and Roman. Yarn will create some job. So that job is created with the resource manager and submit into your Hadoop cluster with your respective data nodes. Their name will communicate all the references and providing all the data one by one. So Hive Engine playing a big role to interact with the metadata and the Hadoop cluster and the Hive Engine and whatever the query you just provide, the final result output will be sent back to your query engine again, again, again. So how many queries you just paused it, how many operations are just going to be executed, everything can take and care with your Hive Engine and keep on communicating with your metadata as well as Hadoop cluster. Okay. So this is the main motive of your operation. Whatever you submit the command, select start from table or insert into the statement, that all will come with the B-line or Hive shell or web UI. So that all is going to be monitor and um, highlighted barriers, yeah. So here only you're just submitting all your queries and all. This query is going to be run in the backend with the Hive drivers. Hive driver will be in track with your metadata references. Here only all your column names and the scheme and the column name and its data type, everything just stored. This is keep on communicate with your Hive. So whenever uh, the references are just reach, this references is going to be applying with our yarn. Yarn as a kind of Hadoop cluster environment, it is allocating as a job and it is going to be communicate, so inter internally communicate with your resource manager. Here only all the jobs will be converted to task. So map it is task or spark task or test task, whatever is just create multiple tasks here that will be controlled with each node manager on top of your data nodes. So in Hadoop, we have a name node and data node. Inside only the data is stored. Already we just seen that example. Here the task is going to be communicated and start the process. And whenever that reference is required, we have a name node. Name node will give you what where the data is available, what is the replication factor we are following on it. All the references we will be getting from name node and keep on communicating with your yarn and data node always. This is happening. And finally, job completer, it will be producing that output to your hive. It's a kind of some acknowledgement. I have completed my job, and this is the output for them. This all the references are just collected and sent back to your driver. So all your query, not a single query, all your query will be running like that only always. Okay. Understood. Any question on this? This is very, very important to understand your hive architecture. Hope you have some idea and now it's clear, right? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, super. So, Jay, if, if anything happened in uh, cluster manager itself, what will happen this time? Anything happen means any uh, example? Any, uh, any downtime or uh, when when we moving this uh, file, this to this, uh, any happening this, uh, sometimes volume balances uh, happen. Like this way, 
to increase the volume that time happened the down time also that time how to manage the cluster manager how to handle that uh, 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 data node storage and all all of them will be taken care of with your hadoop clusters there is no downtime because uh, here we are following with the replication factor and block references so multiple things we are approaching it so we will not be following any downtime otherwise what will happen our business going to be lost it so we need to continue so continuous our business always on time right we cannot provide any downtime factor you suppose the data volume is huge it just it cannot hold the data it will be adding a new data node so we have multiple data nodes we are using it internally multiple data nodes only keep on listening all the data with the replication factor if suppose cluster is full we will be getting the acknowledgement based on that we have to add one more cluster and immediately just start and communicate with that cluster otherwise what will happen it doesn't allow to write the data new data into our cluster it just keep on listening and keep on providing the output uh, with that whatever the data as it is because it's already existing data based on that we have to take the decision without any problem am i right yeah if it is a three node uh, three node server means uh, that it keep on uh, the same uh, xerox copy into another node or another uh, uh, cluster itself if I, if it is not in if it is uh, in single node cluster that is that time what will happen that uh, um, that sometimes i heard that uh, environment itself there no that uh, node is uh, down now node is going down that like this way i i heard news that's the reason i'm asking yeah on premises data nobody is using a single node uh, at okay. least they will be going with minimum 3x application that's the reason we are creating our containers whatever we are providing the real time practice cluster right with the minimum 3x replication otherwise what will happen your system may goes to safe mode it's not a downtime it's called a safe mode so at the time you cannot access any data with your cluster environment as it is so but in real time organization nobody is using the standalone say, single node they must okay. go 100 node cluster 50 node cluster or 1000 node cluster like that only they just just design if suppose data size is fill internally into that environment they are additionally adding one more rack server it's a kind of concept is called commissioning mm -hmm. okay so they are adding a one more data node and they are trying to applying all our data with that replication factor as it is with them okay and we are getting some acknowledgement how much resource how much node the uh, data size uh, we have used and how much it's filled the capacity everything we can see with command as well as we are getting some notification you know, suppose it's reached almost 80% threshold or 70% threshold itself yeah okay, you are you are telling that notification now that you are telling that notification what is that notification am i asking that the zookeeper will kill that alarm alert itself how to see that notification <sighs> in our terminal and you will be getting the notification via your admin team admin team handle all of them right they are getting all the references whenever they are going to start and we are getting some email notification as well in the back end we can connect the configurations and based on that once the data is filled with 80% or 70% you will be getting that notification immediately with through mail as well okay, okay. like that we can design it so some type of protocols we can design and we can read the data in the back end or they are using some monitoring tool that monitoring tool itself it will be producing how much it right now occupancy is happen so based on that they will be indicate and inform to the certain management team and add one more cluster to maintain or they will be start with some unwanted clean up some test data will be loaded right everything they are trying to clean up so they have full access with the cluster environment they are doing all of them okay okay uh, dinesh uh, yep the data has been stored in the different clusters or in the same cluster itself because the one for one job the data has been split into different uh, clusters uh you can see right yes, this hadoop hadoop cluster box inside you have multiple nodes is available it's yes. not a single data nodes we are using multiple nodes multiple data nodes we have yes. so yes. those nodes will be handle all your data example you are loading 1 gp data data node 1 have 1, one gp data the replication mm -hmm. data node 3 or 4 how many nodes you just involved based on that that other node also just keep on listening that same data okay uh, that's what i if uh, the data is means in, in the first cluster we have uh, example five nodes or something if the mm -hmm. data is full the remaining data will be stored in another cluster or how it's not a data? cluster it's another node 
If oh, cluster okay. fill, you are getting the notification to at okay. admin level. Okay. For the same so job, no? we cannot store the data in the two clusters are like that. Only one cluster with the data nodes. No, inside the cluster only nodes is available. One cluster have multiple nodes. Yes. Okay. So that multiple nodes holding the data. So yes. that holding that particular day records, right? It is we are trying to approach via our hive engine or other block engines we have. So that's the ecosystem is called. So the best other we are trying to read it. You suppose one data node is full. Okay. Okay. Other data nodes have some spaces. Then okay. whenever you are trying to inject the data into Hadoop cluster, at the time, Yarn and name node can decide where we have to load the data. Data node 1, 2, 3, it's kind of some utilization we have. That utilization report based that Yarn and name node can decide, okay, we will be planning to write the data into this particular data node. Data node 3 and data node 4 and data node 2, we have okay. some spaces we can write the data into this path. Like that, it will be taking that responsibility. So data node is nothing, our like our machine. Each mm. data node have a separate storage, separate RAM, separate uh, what is that core is available. That's just holding your data. And whenever required, it just come, accept the command from the master name node and enhance immediately. This is happening. It's kind of microservice, Dinesh. Um, we may be considered as a microservice, but it's a uh, um, we cannot uh, we may consider the concept as a microservice. That's it. Uh, but in the back end, everything will be followed with some. Uh, how can I say protocol services only okay. because microservice very less data can control here everything will be sent through blocks okay. MB level so by default 128 MB we will be creating and will be transferring the data with minimum 120 MB as a block references so there is some RPC protocols or network IC protocols available based on that it will be transferring the data is huge data at once okay based on the serialization concept so that's we are going to see that serialization in next one or two session. But give me some time. We will be go step by step. Okay. Dinesh, uh, if all the nodes are uh, occupied in a cluster, is it mm. uh, the 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 storage or uh, the processing will it taken from the next cluster or it will wait for the same clusters available? Cluster means nodes. You are talking. No, no, no. I'm just talking about the cluster. I mean, uh, as you said, like uh, within the cluster, we have, uh, for an example, five nodes. That five nodes are already occupied with some other process, right? So, Correct. So, so we are going to run another job. So that job will wait for the same cluster to be available, or it will run. It will take the space from the the another cluster. Another notes that Yan can identify where this part job uh, we are but going to support. For an because... example, for an example, in the cluster, there is no nodes are available. Mm. What will be the case? Uh, that is my no. question. No, in this uh, cluster should be available at least in three node minimum. I'm saying without no, no, nodes, will be available. Uh, the space or the processing power is not available. For an example, we are okay. running multiple jobs. Now that time might be very busy in the cluster. okay. At the time, yeah. hundred percent occupancy. If suppose it was happened, what will uh, the yeah. next? That's you are asking, right? Yes, yes. So yarn right. have all the references. Each node, how much? If suppose it is reached into the hundred percent utilizations, then yeah. your job will be in accepted state whatever we've seen right in our yarn environment the job id and the running state or finished state something on that place we can see everything as an accepted state until resources allocated once the resources allocated then only it will be moved into running state okay so whatever even, though, is, even though there is an available in another cluster it will not take it from there it will wait for the same clusters availability and it will run after that only, right? no it's not a single cluster inside the cluster we have multiple node all the node example we are using a three node cluster okay three node total we have eight gb ram and uh, four cores so total core is 12 core as well as 24 gb ram this is our environment am i right Yes, yes, but but my question is, for an example, if you have a multi cluster, that is the case I'm asking actually. So for an example, we you have a two cluster. Multi cluster is nothing but multi node is called as a multi cluster. There is a confusion here. You can see there is a data node I just mentioned it right. There is a one node, mm -hmm. another one node, 
another one node all three will be combined right this is the one cluster inside only this nodes is stored here agb ram or four core here agb ram four core here agb ram four core everything if you are going to calculate the total size will come into 12 cores and 24 gb rams okay so this is your yarn total memory allocations when are you going to submit the job it is allocated based on this is sizes so with the 24 gb ram and 12 core how many job i can run it i am already running with the five job or everything will be occupied so then in this cases i just only have this references out of this memory how much it was utilized understood okay got it for an example yeah we have this one cluster for an example we have two clusters for an example separate cluster i don't uh, mean the same cluster with multiple nodes so the yeah. same setup we have some other uh, clusters no for some other purpose so will it be connected internally or uh, that is my question no high engine can connect only one node one cluster, nobody node. yeah nobody is going to create two clusters separate and they will be maintaining with your data Hadoop okay. cluster separate, Kafka cluster separate, Hadoop cluster separate. Like that only they will be maintaining it. Each organization they are maintaining only one cluster. They are slicing that internal the spaces and all with based on their data mods. Like that only they are going to handle it. But nobody creating more than one cluster. Maybe creating one cluster for dev, another one cluster for production. Like that they will be designing that cluster. But nobody creating a separate separate cluster for their individual operation. And suppose they are going to create and use it. That's a separate data mod concept that is only support with their particular job under that particular hive. They are separately inserting hive to hive engine separate and uh, Spark engine separate. Everything will go with the separate separate operation. So in real time organization, nobody is touching like that. Everybody is using same Hadoop cluster and do their operation. Okay, okay, got it. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dinesh, one last question. So, yeah. as you said, like uh, we are going to use one uh, cluster. For example, that one cluster, uh, we have twelve core, or uh, for example, hundred GB. So, mm -hmm. in future, so we may get more number of volume of data. So, mm -hmm. I need to increase the cluster. Uh, do we have option on that, or uh, yes? Okay. That's the commissioning. I can add yeah. a one more data node or ten data node at once. Then automatically cluster sizes increase, right? Okay. Already example so five nodes. Commissioning in the sense of G. Commissioning in the sense of we are adding the lifetime that uh, mounting that uh, EBS volume. Like this way, you are telling the commissioning. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. We are yeah. mounting additional nodes into the cluster. That's called commissioning. So we are adding two, two, three nodes or ten nodes at once. At the time, what will happen? Each of them have few resources with the RAM and core and their story that will be occupied and will be increased into into your Hadoop cluster by default. So at the beginning, the people are trying to start their cluster with minimum three node to five node. After that, they are trying to increase the node whenever it's required. They keep ready for that all the nodes whenever utilization reach into seventy to eighty percent. They are adding one more node or five nodes at immediate based on business use case. They are trying to add all the nodes one by one. Okay, like that they will be increasing their cluster sizes. They know already how much the node we are using, how much record we are keep on maintaining it. Everything based on that, they will start the immediate action. Understood. Uh, Dinesh, uh, I have one question. Uh, yeah, please okay. consider uh, only uh, two records. Uh, uh, I, I would like to insert only two records. So uh, these two records, how uh, it will perform in uh, resource manager like task one, task two, task three. Data mm -hmm. node and the name nodes. Those, those with with the two records. Would you please explain? So I'm I'm a very new to in this. Uh... Mm. Okay, that's a uh, blocks. Uh, we have to go in the back end of Adobe call Gartham concept. Uh, later we will be seeing that. But uh, as your question, I would like to answer right now itself. That two records will be considered as a single blocks. Okay, so based on that you know, block chunks only, the task is going to be created. So these two records should be list very small records, right? Just consider as a single block. It will be create as a only one task. This task will be allocated to your nodes. Suppose your 
trying to read 10000 records or 1 million record at run time at the time it just having the calculation based on the serializations and dividing with data at run time and it will be creating multiple blocks and multiple based on the multiple blocks it will be creating multiple splits and it just going to be read internally with multiple tasks as it is okay suppose if we consider 100 data uh, mm. um, uh, how it will be like a 10 10 data will be segregated and it will go uh um, each no, task each task task task, 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 yeah. task task one task two task three like that it will be designed so that's we are calling as a mapper in spark we are calling as a task and the test also we are calling as a task okay, okay. how much okay. record how much based on that how much record we are designing the task here that's it clear so this this all internally it will uh, uh, do that right Mm. Okay. Is internally we will be going to see some basic example with Hadoop in some time. I don't like to go with the boring part of Hadoop at the beginning, so that I just start with the practical thought. Only one half an hour session we have to discuss about Hadoop this backend algorithm. What's happening? What are all these things with respect to developer related? And we will be going to see some Hadoop commands related. And we have you need access, so until we have to wait. Okay, once See. you will be all of them get the access, we will be going to discuss about all the commands and all in practice. See, yeah, please. Two more questions, sir. Here, if uh, one cluster, uh, I have uh, multi node. Uh, that is, uh, how many data node will be there? How many name node will be there? How many yarn will be there? Uh, I know only resource manager, zookeeper will be a uh, resource manager. One resource manager. This yarn, how many will be, will be there? The three node cluster, example three node cluster. How many name node? How many data node? Only one name node. Only okay. one yarn. Only okay. one resource manager. Okay. okay. Internally, multiple data nodes. Each data node we have a separate node manager. So how many data node you are using? Those many node manager are available. Okay. okay. Data node will be uh, distributed three. Okay. Am I correct? <clears throat> Minimum three. it will okay, be go with a 1000 10000 there is no scalability you can mention or as you wish so hard up 3 they have introduced it. there is no limitation hard up 2 they will be uh, limited with a 10000 nodes maximum you can add a number of them in hard up 3 expression there is no limitations okay uh, how many node we can increase but one yarn only uh, will be there that one yarn yeah, itself but... this node uh, any condition is that this node only app, uh, we can uh increase the node like this number any number is there uh maybe i will show in the back end in some time so everybody okay. is understand about the architecture we will i will show that example okay. because another if we one are seeing the job references right that itself we can see that okay another one if anything any uh, any real time or your imagination your imagination how you corrupted any uh, what will happen this i know the data loss will happen this uh, connect communication uh, uh, recovery challenge is there uh, is it possible or uh, any uh, use uh, any back end uh, any isolate issue purpose they have kept anything in this no mostly hive corrupted we can immediately resolve it if hadoop corrupted then only we don't have any other option but mostly it won't happen they will be providing some accuracy uh, 99% they will be providing accuracy whatever the data you will just folder in hadoop cluster that should be secure otherwise business doesn't move into hadoop cluster if suppose hive corrupted is happen we can upgrade with our next level version like that we can do some maintenance So how is a kind of framework wrapper on top of a Hadoop cluster? How we are accessing the data? That's it. No, I, any human uh, human error or software bugs it will happen. No, that is I your legacy issue. You are telling about the legacy issue. You have to upgrade like this way. You are telling any mm. hardware failures or software bugs or human error. That time to have a uh, uh, high corrupted. That time uh, data loss will happen. That query will not fetch each and everything. Uh, that performance degradation will happen. No, that time. Any uh, immediate isolation purpose, any backend uh, only immediate. What I have understood from this architecture, metadata will be act as here. Uh, how like this way it will use or not? Like this way I am asking. Metadata separately handled by your other nodes, so it okay. doesn't part of your hardy. Okay. Okay. Metadata okay. separately noded with your RDBMS. They are only just kind of related. Hardy data also will be separately handled by your hardy. Okay. That's the reason I just mentioned two boxes separate. 
so i only can read the data based on their algorithm and producing the output to the driver this is happening okay how you can note this metadata is a separate box i just declared adip cluster is a separate box so metadata also will be controlled by some separate nodes as well as data also separate handled by separate nodes then what is i i just a wrapper it have some algorithm this algorithm help to read the data faster write the data faster that's it it doesn't hold any references even metadata also it doesn't hold by himself it is a separate not even those tools we are using there are only the notes the data and table references column partitioning serialization reference uh, details everything will be stored in a separate and suppose node is goes down with your metadata at the time we are facing some challenges that's the reason they are maintaining with high availability concept there so no worry if hive is corrupt we can replace the hive with a new upgrade version and we can use it or we can change the library compatibility issues might be going to raise it that we are going to resolve and we can use it okay. it's just a wrapper it doesn't have any data responsibility or schema responsibility whatever is available it's just going to be occupied and start the operation immediate okay. got it got it any other question guys <laughs> Uh, hi, this is Mr. Abhinaya. I have yeah, a question. Uh, like uh, you, you mentioned, the task will be splitted and it will run in different, uh, like uh, task one, task two, like that. So whether mm. we will be able to know how it is uh, splitted uh, or uh, uh, it will be uh, internally managed by Yon, we will not know how it is splitted. No, no, well. that I will, I will help you. This question and uh, for your question answer, while we are going to discuss the Hadoop and uh, Spark related, I will show you in front of how much data, how many uh, tasks has to be designed. Everything I will oh. show you in front of you. Done. Just give me some time. Oh, we have knowledge. We can understand how much node is going to be generated and all. Oh. Okay. And one more doubt, like this uh, thrift service, you it is mentioned. No, what is that? Ah, uh, uh, that is the next one. next thrift server is nothing but you may be producing your queries right via Hive shell. We are directly passing our uh, commands. So select star from or insert into. We are passing it. So automatically just understand and it will be start all the operation. What if suppose you are going to call via REST API or program? Because in program also we are going to access it, right? So that programmatically you are going to access it. That is going to be called with REST API calls, or so PPI calls. Something is available. Other time it can understand. If I am going to write the code in Java, then oh. what is the code they have designed? What is the query they have passed it? I am going to write my code in C, C plus plus, or Python, or Ruby, Ruby. Our list, okay. our Go programming, a lot of programs available. I'm going to utilize and I'm going to write my code to read the data through Hive Engine. So at that time, what is the command they have published? That all can control and understand by your Thrift service. Oh. So Thrift service only can understand and convert into the compiler. Example, my query is incorrect. By mistakenly, I just added some incorrect syntax. I have to validate, right? That all will be taken care of with your Thrift service. Everything is correct with the driver and thrift server. Then uh, only just reach into the compiler. Compiler, compile and com verify the syntax. If anything errors happen, then compiler will shoot the query output as so invalid or incorrect syntax something. Okay. If everything is fine, then only it will be reached into Hive Metastore. Oh, okay. Hive Metastore only holding all your column names and data type, where this location, what is the path value, everything can hold by your Hive Metastore until it doesn't reach. Sometimes what will happen, your syntax is correct, but table is not correct. Maybe you will be creating the table in a different databases. So at that time, what will happen, the query is going to be shot into the thrift server. Thrift service can understand this query is correct and uh, the, whatever the syntax is correct. The syntax is correct, the table not found. Exception will be throw from Hive Metastore. Hive Metastore. Okay. okay. Any oh. syntax error or any incorrect formats, whatever you provide, that will be immediately identified and reflect back from your compiler itself. Everything is okay. correct. That object level changes is happening, or object level any correction corruption is happen. That will be provided by the high meta store. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, there is actually one doubt. Like, I mean, what the driver role is here? Uh, I mean, what is driver those? 
a driver is nothing but each of the your request right that will be a monitor keep listen and will be sent all the operation that's it. because you are providing insert into command select start from command so we have a driver this is the command i have received from the end user what is the output like that it is going to be communicate with your metadata and hive engine so what will happen there is a yeah this syntax is correct okay we can proceed that information will be gathered and i which is going to be start and work with the hadoop node and send back the output to you back right select start from table i just provide three records i just found those three records i can get through hive driver only to whatever the end user they raised it so you are producing the command select start from you are seeing the output in the terminal itself this output will be sent back through your driver only okay okay everything just gathered and provided the output based on your request so it's a kind of rest api calls keep on listening your request whether the, requ the particular job is complete it will be make some successive acknowledgement and will publish the output to you we have a separate o ui is available i will show you in some time okay okay so we are focusing as of now only with architecture level everybody is clear then i will show you the back end with the uh, the particular node itself not worry any other question guys i no, just uh, uh, ah yeah, it's a it's a basic question cuz uh, uh we can do the same in uh, via scoop also uh, only as of as i know uh, hive is used can be used for data warehouse uh, so uh, even we can use scoop also right so what's the difference uh, between the hive and uh, scoop because both uh, do uh, we can do uh, pass the uh, sql commands and do the same thing so what may be the uh, big difference between uh, hive and scoop actual scoop is retired as of now okay and uh, scoop use case is different it is trying to read from rdbms not from hadoop cluster and write those data into hadoop cluster that's it it doesn't do any retrieval operation select stuff from table nothing you can see it is trying to read your data from oracle or ms sql or mysql anywhere it is trying to read the data from them and write the data into hadoop cluster as a files that's it. that's the use of your scope okay but hive on top of your data whenever record you can read the data and you can do all your aggregation factors like a select start from table or count or group by or windowing whatever blah 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 everything you can approach with your hive commands but scoop just to read the data and write into hadoop that's it yes but uh, even in scoop using the query command you can group uh, query scope. yeah that is extract from your oracle table not from hadoop mm -hmm. cluster okay okay i do understand it yeah because in your oracle environment you just load the data that you want to write into your hadoop cluster then you can use it so that query will be execute that output will be collect and bring into hadoop that's it one as a file once data is loaded into the hadoop cluster on top of that you can read as you wish whenever is required okay okay i do understand thank you hmm. any other question guys Does anybody are clear? Okay, fine then. Everyone is clear with the architecture right now, right? You have no doubt with the architecture, I guess. G, last one, sorry. Uh, that uh, thrift services uh, we uh, we we have used as uh, a code in uh, environment already. We have used like uh, like Python code itself from. Uh, Uh, thrift server itself like this way we have used that is uh, one of the api you know the uh, it will uh, in this uh, architecture thrift service is uh, inbuilt or uh, separately we have to use that api no whatever you are providing the query by default hive wrapper can understand and can, uh, submit into your compiler through thrift service because multiple requests will come from multiple programming apis right so that is can understand by your thrift service only nothing beyond it yeah i have used that thrift service api for that uh, making the delegacy issue when when it happened the delegacy issue that time that thrift service uh, uh, will help us that uh, client performance uh, 
will be good that time uh, we have used thrift service as a server uh, it has server that is thrift service has separate uh, protocol server it has sub separate socket also so that we have used that from there uh, api we have used the setup and all containerization setup and all uh, what is different between this and that uh, because uh, what i understand that trip service here uh, only what i saying that uh, any um, legacy issue that is uh, system integration legacy issue will happen no that is uh, you are telling the upgradation that will not happen in future upgradation automatically uh this up to this version itself she can it had managed that's a that service can manage like this way we have used in uh container container itself that is i that use case my my experience this uh fr different from theft service this is a internal apa or separately we have to give any protocol for this well, this is a part of your hive hive server as a concept is available internally trip service is available so Hive server doesn't uh, nothing, just uh, the Hive driver, whatever mm -hmm. I mentioned, right? It is accepting the query and submit it to Thrift service. Thrift service uh, can understand and uh, expand whatever your query provided based on the program. It just al analyze it and uh, fetching those query and will be submit into your compiler. Because what will happen, you are going to submit your query through API. The data will not be uh, opened. It's a serialized format they will be sending it. So what kind of data they have sent? What is the query they have sent? Everything can understood. It just expand those those information and then only just submit. Thrift service just holding your query. That's it. What are you passing the query? You select start from or insert to any query you passed it. Just holding it and compare with the compiler and start the operation. If any issues with the thrift server, then it's a part of your Hive engine. Once you're going to change your Hive versions that are Hive software, then automatically it will be resolved. It doesn't affect anything more than that. Okay, maybe your job going to fail. Maximum saying, whatever you're providing, I'll start from that query, right? Your job goes fail. That's it. Nothing beyond it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Clear? Okay, clear. Okay. For data visualization, um, suppose if you are going to um, uh, see any report from here, um the same like uh, yarn resource manager data nodes th those all will be happen 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 inside or exactly the How same only. yeah data visualization also you're going to call from power bi or tableau or zeppelin whatever the tools you are going to use it at Thailand, you're going to use it that's going to be communicated through to server because that is a different format. The Power VA or Tableau, they'll be designing based on different programming. So that time that query is going to be communicated with the thrift service and will be read and start their operation with your Hadoop cluster by default. Okay. okay, we have to provide multiple connectivity, right? So that's the use of we are creating this kind of architecture flares. Okay, thank you. Uh, sir, uh, suppose the data is present, but the metadata is deleted. What will what will happen in that case? The table not found because data metadata is deleted means your table object is going to be failed. If suppose only particular column is deleted, other columns exist. You can read the data, whatever they have mentioned it. But I want to get the data of that particular table. That you want. Then you have to sync properly with your schema. You by mistakenly you just create the schema incorrect, then you cannot retrieve the data. So you must know what kind of data it is, what is the column and its data type. Everything we have noted. Just before I just write the data, right? Only one column I just mentioned instead of string to int. Uh, so sorry, int to string. What will happen? It just shows us a NAND value, not a number value. Other re column references I can read successfully. Only one column I cannot read it. Right. Is there a, is there any way to identify that which table don't have a metadata? Uh, no, table means it should be a followed with metadata only. If any particular metadata missing, the table also not found. That's it. Okay. So metadata is nothing but the metadata database level or oh, table level inside only the columns level is just storing it. Am I right? You suppose yes. any table is found, not found, then your metadata collapsed. That's it. You cannot read it. Again, you can create as a new table. 
because on that existing path you can create the table schema and you can read the data again from there we have just to remind me while we are going to discuss with external table i will show that example in front of you sure sir sir what is the extension of uh, the file which is present in the inside the hadoop while we are creating the new table mm. is there any extensions or format yeah we have to mention a text file or a avro pocket we are having using lot of schema files is available that we are going to see the next first okay. we are going to compare the table types internal table and external table differences and then we are going to see with all the file formats we are going to read the data from pocket oc avro json file complex data type everything we are going to read and see the examples in some time i will show that sir uh, so can one more thing sir can we keep the metadata and the data in the same node or inside the same directory something like that no we cannot if suppose we are storing in the same node itself what will happen any yeah. fault tolerance the failures has happened we cannot retrieve it so that's the mechanism they are not writing the data as well as the metadata at once they are keep safe in uh, different different places okay uh, if anyhow we put into the same directory or same node what will happen no. sir in that case we don't have an option like that this oh. entire architecture they will not be designed like that even if suppose you are trying we don't have any uh, options because it's related to your fault tolerance any data is missing you cannot retrieve it right so they need to balance everything so that's the reason they will be designing this flow we cannot modify it we don't have an option is to store the data as well as metadata at the same place maybe stand alone stand alone in the single node itself you can install your metadata databases as well as your table data data nodes everything at one places there you can do it but multi node cluster there is no options in real time everybody using multi node cluster only there is no option they have provided like that okay got it yeah thank you okay any other question guys it's so interesting for me as per lot of question is comes yes thank you ji because uh, another from apart from the query and all we can see through google but that is architecture wise uh, terminology lot of uh, how it will be work this we can't get from that google itself that's the reason mm -hmm. this should know that i'm welcoming yeah. all your questions no problem yeah, yeah. so interactive session this is concept basis so you must understand the concept that's very very important so whatever the doubts you can ask me we will discuss in detail don't worry about it thank you everyone is clear shall i go next okay fine okay so next to what we are think okay so this is the hive server what are you asking the thrift service operation right the thrift service will be controlled here only you can see this whatever the query i just passed all the information i can get gather from here what is the execution engine just used what is the problem so here some corruption has happened what is the state of this one and how it is the query we have used it all the information i can gather from here as well so who is the user what is the ip address he has used and what is the active time how long you just keep on waiting this node all the information we can gather this is controlled by your hive servers hive server will be following with your thrift service this is happening so all the query you can easily monitor from here okay and then what we are planning to discuss 
yeah internal table and external table you can see this example the scheme on column name and data type is modified you cannot read the data successfully here. okay next external table so external table i would like to create one more uh, with some samples I do I have a sample Okay, I have samples. I would like to read the data. Here we are using a different different formats. Pocket, Avro, ORC, a lot of file formats we are using. Uh, maybe I just going to use some samples. What is the file? Okay, the sample, not a CSV. Okay, so this record is a part of CSV. We are using it. This is we are trying to write the data into Hadoop environment. On top of that, we are going to create the table. Okay, so sample data. So this the sample data I would like to create yeah. as a table. Yeah. yeah sorry. Uh, just now you show one of the port, no, that is a five double zero one zero. Am I correct? That is that port, which which uh, which port uh, that is data data node port or this one or which one? This five double zero one zero. I think so. That is a data, the history is there now. That is uh, what are we are have still we have used this one. Yeah. yeah. One. This is high zero. server one okay. triple zero. One triple one triple zero. Okay. One uh, ten one uh, triple uh, yeah, yeah, triple okay. zero it will come. Memory it will be in uh, Hive server. Sorry. Yeah, this is okay. the example. Mm -hmm. We have locked this port, so that only I just create with one zero two as of now. So it will come into ten thousand or ten thousand one something. Okay. Okay. Ah, finish. But this is uh, this could be maintained by like big data admin, right? So uh, we have whether we have to check it the. Uh, in the sometimes they will provide access to you sometimes they will only have the access okay if you have chances you have a card of trust and just check out what is happening with your job and all you in the question the... Uh, they may be asking if you are in node in data node what are the port will be used you, you have to solve that uh, that it's a uh, what you, we can't say exact number that 500 series like this way if i tell that it will be good in uh, interview wise that's the reason i'm asking uh, interview wise, mostly you'll check this yarn UUI. This is the page mainly you are using it, and yeah. some port eight zero four two like eight zero four two four zero. Each, like... no, you, uh, there is no uh, restrictor. Default port is eight zero eight eight and uh, five double zero seven zero. But based on your admin, he just modifying the port numbers, so we cannot exactly determine because one for dev, one other one for production. Like that, they have to design it right. So suppose they are designing everything on the same node, they may be locked with a port issue. So that's the reason they will be creating a separate port ID references. Okay. okay. So that's the reason we cannot acknowledge. What is the default port number? We can mention. So 50070, 8088, and 50010. These are also related to your Hadoop cluster. And Roman, maybe while we are going to discuss with Hadoop cluster, right? Uh, just to remind me, I will give anyway, you anyway. It has separate number. port, no J G. That is, uh, if I go for Hadoop name node, it has separate port. There is 50070, like this will come. That if mm. I go for resource manager, uh, 8 series will come. Resource manager, 8 series will come. I'm not correct exact uh, port number. If we okay. go for map producer, uh, 500 come, 500 comes, data node, 500 comes because I'm yeah. using the data my image in a lot of time that I know that Hadoop cluster 500. One, uh -huh. two, three, the sequence will be modified right, based on your nodes. So okay. that's the reason we cannot determine the exact port number. Instead of that, you can mention the default port series. It uh, we might can, be we start can start tell the series, but the exact port number we can't decide. That is uh, any way where it will be free, that will be we can use it in. Uh, um close, close, close. the environment but uh serious you should know now that is serious i'm yeah, asking yeah. that yeah that's so we will discuss in our hard topics don't worry about it okay? okay i will give you that inputs okay now what i'm planning to i'm planning to create this file as a table where the file is just load into data path okay so let me going to read this table dfs hyphen airless slash oh sorry just uh, less uh, local right 
Okay, here only the file is available. Let me go into create a path in Hadoop. So Hadoop, I can create Hadoop HDFS. I just, uh, whenever I'm going to use Hive terminal, I just only declare DFS. By default, it's supposed to go. You can use DFS, DFS, hyphen, NKDA, and then I can declare it. So slash, this is the home path you are. Hadoop environment. So slash user, username, and then I would like to create the path. So input is a path. In, inside the input path, I would like to write this files. So this is a CSV file. I just mentioning it. So request if you want to create the folders, you can use this command, hyphen p. So this is d thirty. So thirty one. Okay, so this is the path I am trying to create. Okay, now I'd like to write the data into this path. DFS iPhone put the when source you say exclamatory exclamatory. No, I'm using kernel basis. This is a terminal based command, right? It's supposed to execute here. I can use the STFS command directly. I'm using a kernel basis. Kernel basis, I want to declare a Linux important, command. Important, with a, important this is a, no, this is the Linux kernel. Okay, Linux okay. commands, I'm trying to execute via Hive kernel. Right? Okay. Okay. All the Linux commands, if, I go, if I'm going to execute via uh, the particular uh, different kernel, I have to use this semicolon. Sorry, this extra matrix symbol. Okay. So sample.txt file, uh, so data records.txt file. I just copy. Now, this file I would like to write into our environment CSV path. Okay, now file has to be written successfully. Now I'm just going to be read the data. Okay, file is available here. If suppose you want to see this information, you can use five double zero seven zero. Ah, uh, okay. So for administrative purpose, I just modified from five zero to six zero. So here, this is available in our enrollment with the six series, not five series. Here you can see this browse the file, and you can see the files here. User big data area d thirty first inputs CSV path. Inside here only the file is stored. You can see the permissions, owner, group, total file size of the file, last under three x replication. We are following it. By default, 3x replication, we're just writing it. As of now, for our practice purpose, I just reduce it to 16 MB. By it, but in real time, default is 128 MB. For our training purpose, I just reduce it to 16 MB in the configuration level. Otherwise, it's 128. Okay, now I'd like to see this data where it is. So this is a default 3x replication I just stored. So now this data is stored in a data node 2, data node 1, and data node 3. Here, data node 3 is a parent. From here only, data node 1 and 2 has to be replicated. That information I can gather from here. This is the only one block keep on maintaining. If suppose it is loading multi, more than one block, I can see the block ID references here. What is the block ID names? Each block so, will be same size Same size uh, in each node? Each story yeah, by default 128 MB, it just designed mostly. It's okay. approximate 128 MB, uh, 130, 129, something it will come. No, but it's close just, to just the... no, no. Just now you showed me that it's twelve MB. Uh, I mean, things, uh, twelve MB like this uh, one block, and mm. that one block, uh, a, the same uh, size will be stored in uh, child node and parent node. Same same size will be stored one block. I'm asking you the one block. No, in the block itself you have multiple files. For example, one GB data you have. Okay. While you are writing your one GB data into Hadoop cluster, how it is stored? Yeah, the block will be. Black number will be changed. 
am i correct the black yeah, number it will is be slice into 8 part 128 mb or 16 mb whatever we set the configuration right based on that it just divide it and store it internally and each will be following with block id references so okay. all the blocks will be combined then only you have a only one file data underscore ten records i just create this file this file if suppose it have more than 1 gb or 1 gb file then this will be created into 8 to 10 blocks and store it when all i'm going to read this 10 blocks then only i can read this entire file am i right yes yes this is happening internal so if suppose this file have 1 gb i can see what all the blocks is available all the list i can see here Okay, this is all the backend algorithm, backend understanding, so that I just showing all. G, if I, for example, I am giving five twelve MB data. Okay, mm. this ah one twenty eight, one twenty eight, two block will be in each node. Am I correct? The parent date, parent block, one two block. Ah, uh, that same way the child also or two block. Am I correct? Five twelve MB means uh, uh, it should be a four blocks. Four blocks. Okay. Okay, five twelve. Divided by one twenty eight. How much it will come? One twenty eight. Four. Okay. Right. Okay. So this is can be controlled by four blocks into three replication. How okay. much? Twelve block can be allocated. Okay. Yeah. Again and again. Why I am asking? You know that is. Uh, Uh, if five twelve MB parent block, uh, so five twelve MB parent block four no four block. Sorry, five twelve MB size is four block in parent node. The oh. same way, the uh, the child node also five twelve MB in four block in child node also. E is it equally distributed? It will happen or um, uh, what I am telling that is a uh, uh, any variation is there. There is one of the block is completed, then we'll go to our next block like this way. We'll go. Uh, sorry, one node will complete this block. Then we'll go to next block. Like this way, next Each, node. Each you are just confused. Each yeah. block have a one parent. Block one, block okay. two, block three. It have a parent. So it okay. will be by default it will be replicated into data node one as a parent. This block data will be write into data node two. This block write into data node three. Example I am saying. From here only it just start the replication to other two nodes. Okay. Okay. So there's a child node. So data node one have a data node five and four. Data node two have a three and one. This is maybe have six two. How many blocks you have? That will be replicated from here. This is the main. Okay, it will take the responsibility for the replication and all. Like that only it's happening. Each blocks. This is a block one. This is a block two. This is a three. Something is available. Okay. Understood. Yeah. There is one question here. So, if it is like the, the example of five to LMB, so that will be four blocks and four data nodes. Mm. Correct. Four blocks will be stored in a different different four data nodes. If we have only three data nodes as of now. It will be replicated into three data nodes, uh, different different places. If you are using a hundred node cluster, each of them will be stored in a different different data nodes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Dinesh. Uh, is it, this is the maximum size one twenty eight, or we can increase the size as you wish. You can increase or decrease as you wish. That's the reason I just decreased into sixteen MB. No, no, because sixteen. Okay, a uh, maximum size. I am asking. Maximum Ma size is nothing. You can mention as you wish. Even okay. uh, you can declare with one uh, GB. You can declare it ten GB. Okay. You can declare it. But nobody okay, okay. goes more than one GB. Mm. Uh, they will be maintaining with uh, five two fifty six or one twenty eight maximum. They will not be go beyond that because okay. single block if supposed to create that much na the mm. data readability will take long time. So mm. that they will not be providing uh, that block size is more than that. Okay. Okay. Sir, is there any uh, reason to have a one twenty eight MB by default? Oh, reason again. If it is a small file, the resource will be allocated and locked a long time. That's the reason they are uh, com comfort with that particular sizes. This task has to be minimum this sizes like that they have designed it. If less than one twenty eight MB, if suppose I am going to create ten tasks, what will happen? Yahan will allocate the resources and keep on listening and waiting for some time. We will be generating lot of logs, right? 
So the everything we cannot maintain it. That's the reason they will be going with adequate sizes. So Hadoop 1x version, they will be going with 64 MB. Later they realized and they will be increasing to 128 as a default block size. Okay. That's the reason. Beyond that, nothing. If suppose you want to increase your block sizes more than 128 MB, then you can declare by your own with 512 or 256 as your wish. They will not be restricted. They will be providing default sizes. Because uh, do you know what is the size of your Linux? In Linux or Windows, while they are writing your files, right? What is the block size they are using it internally? Do you have any idea? Uh, no. Linux just 4 MB. Windows just 128 kilobytes. Okay. So then how many blocks has to be generated for a single 1 MB files? Or 100 1 GB files? Multiple box has to be introduced. So why, that's the reason while you're copying the data and uh, uh, store into the, your environment, it is uh, showing the progress bar. 50% complete, 60% complete, which means that many blocks is copied. Other blocks are keep on list copying. In Hadoop cluster, already we have huge sizes. If I supposed to maintain this many small uh, block sizes, what will happen? The read and write capacity will take long time. We must avoid it. Am I right? Yes. That's the reason that framework has designed with default as a 128 MB block sizes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. If decrease block size, the performance will be increased. That's the reason. Am I correct? Decreasing block size, the performance also goes down. No, black because size means. Yeah, 128 MB two. If you are going to reduce into 64 or 16 or 4 MB, what will happen? That many blocks are generated. That many block will be following with the particular multiple task, right? Okay, okay, okay. That will be the decreased your performances. So sufficient and adequate size is 128 MB. Supposed to increase to 256. That's fine. You cannot go more than that. Otherwise, what will happen? Single task will be taking long time. It doesn't complete within a timeline. That is also big trouble. So we have to balance it. Okay, because it depends on our network bandwidth and uh, data readability, everything we have to consider. Based on that, we have to decide these things. Okay? Yeah. Clear? Yes, thank you. Okay, so now we have discussed, we are writing the data. How the data is stored, how many duplications just followed, where what are the data nodes holding this data? That information we just collected right now. Now, on top of this, I'm going to create one table. Okay, so that is create external table database. What is the keyword of external table? Normally, we can use the table only. Table. If suppose you are not using the external keyword, what will happen? That's what we are going to see now. Okay. Just I'm going to create the same table with external and internal and mm -hmm. we'll show you in front of you what's happening okay. right in the back. Okay. So database I just declared and then I'm going to declare with tables. So this is the customer table or what is that? This is the patient table. So this is the, these are the patient records. So I'm going to create patient underscore CSP. Okay. So this is an external table. For my understanding, I just declare EHT. And what are the columns available? First ID, integer. Second column. Total five columns, right? Mm -hmm. So first column ID as integer, second column name, name as a string, third column medicine it's, or drug. It's, it's, drug also string data I follow. And then gender. That is also string data type. And then that's the last one is age. Age is a kind of like integer. integer. Okay, I just declared. And then a row format. Delimited.
fields terminated by everything we just told here with comma separator. So rows are formatted and delimited properly based on the fields of comma separator that I just declared here. And the file, you are asking what was the file, right? Here only we have to declare stored as text to file. If suppose I'm going to use a different file, pocket arrow, avro, here I want to declare that file name here. Then only how metadata can write this data. Okay, this file will be persist with a text to file related. I have to use this realization like that. It can understand internal. Okay. And this file will be stored into location this path where this file is exist right now that information I want to pass it okay so inside this path only the data is passed this information I am trying to pass it right now Okay, table has created successfully. Now I would like to see this information. DESC describe is a short term for DESC. I'm using on it. I'm trying to read this information. Okay, all the columns ID name, drag, gender, age. What are the column name and type? Now suppose you have one more. You want to see the detailed information. You can use describe formatted and column sorry table name they will provide additional information this is just provide only the column information this will publish column information additional all other data what is the database owner name and when it was created where is this location is possessed then the path we just declared and we are using the keyword external so table type also create as a external table and table parameter. If I suppose to use any other parameter, it will be providing. We will discuss what is third in some time. Just give me. So there's the input references, it's just published by default. And field delimiters, I just follow with comma separator, it's just published. Now I would like to read the data. Select star from table name. I just declaring right. This query, what will happen in the back end? Just to remember. So I'm going to submit this query. What will happen in the back end runtime architecture? It will go to resource manager, then uh, metadata. First, we will Ask check will... the metadata. If it is schema is there or not, first we have to check that only they will go to the okay. Maybe I will do some mistakes. There is a syntax mistake, I'm doing it. Now this query is reaching to driver. Driver going to communicate with our this hive servers. Hive servers validate compile error. You can see that time. I'm just execute the command. Immediately throw error without delays. Right? There is some errors is happening. Cannot recognize input near. Am I right? Now I just going to be modified. I just going to change the table name just by mistake. Okay, now we just you can see table not found. So first error is a kind of uh, uh, related to compiler error. Second one is exceptions. It just come from your Hive service. Now if everything is correct, then you can read the data. All the data properly sliced. I would like to read only for name and drug. I can declare it. With limit five. This is SQL statement I'm using to read the data. Only name and drug references I just read from here. Okay. Everything I can do it here successfully. How many records is available? So select count top star from this table. Oops. 
So there is some aggregation is happening. So just publishing the output in some time. You can see the job, select count of the table. You can see the high history survey details as well. The query just paused. I think it's done. Total tender cuts is available. I can trade it successfully from here. Okay. Till there any question? Okay, fine then. Now I'm going to drop this table. Okay. Now table has successfully drop. If suppose I'm going to read the table from here. Table not found, it's throwing the exception. But if suppose you're creating as an external table, you just go to the path, the data keep on hold by your Hadoop cluster, not high. Okay, the file is so internal existed. internal tables are stored in Hive. External tables are stored in uh, Hadoop. Am I right? No, internal, uh, internal table also stored in Hive only. Now I'm going to locate the same path and create as an internal table. Let's see what's happening. This is the external table I just created, right? Same command I just copied, and I'm going to paste it here. I just replace this keyword. Create table. This is internal table. Int. Okay. So on top of this path, I am going to declare it. Can we declare the location in an internal table? Do you have any idea? It might be interview questions. What, G? what, what can you repeat? No, that particular yes. path, I just declared it, right? The locations. Yes. Can we declare for internal as well? Yes, I did. Can Some we create default two location? Uh, by default, no, no okay. need to create the internal because the database itself the it will take automatically. Okay, by suppose I have data on top of that, I want to create an internal table. Can we do that or not? We can. So, and one more question Can I use the same location for one table for internal, another one table for external? Yes. So, Okay, what is I the think we can't create the uh, same name, same name. Okay, but uh, we can create external table and external uh, internal table on same path. Is it true or not? Yes, we can. I think so. I think what we cannot we cannot do uh, put it in the same path. I think so because already the file is existing, uh, so it may give some error. So, uh, how we can control that? Okay, either you have to delete it, uh, delete the existing file, and uh, you can give the same path. Okay, let me go into create this table. As plus, I'm going to create one more table, external table again, the same path. Let's see that. Okay. Just a moment, I'm going to create now. Internal table, create it successfully. This is external table. Okay, I may be going to read this table. I can read the data on same path. I'm going to create external table. I can read the data as it is. Am I right? There is no changes. So internal table and external table on create on top of the same path. Am I right? Sir, can we have a same name in same path? We cannot mention same name. Location should be the same. Table name is not different. 
otherwise what will happen table already exist command we are getting it right okay instead of taking uh, suppose internal and external these are two different objects so if we put the same name in the same locations we get error come again your question oh, sorry so suppose having uh, we generally use the external keyword while we are creating the external table correct so behalf of that we can uh, identify that this is the external table and this is the internal table suppose we have a same name in the both internal and external table in the same location so we cannot it won't allow which one is the okay. first creator that will be considered as a table other one is supposed to create uh, the same name of the table it will be throwing already exist okay okay sure thank you uh, dinesh if we we have more than one file in the folder yeah we can hold it okay the so both two files will be means more than one file will be consolidated both will be read and will be show output to you don't worry okay okay so here is the same record right i mm. might be going to write one more file mm. that is also will be acceptable in the both table that's not a big deal it will read the data and it will be published here okay whatever the files in the input path uh, the files will it be should, consolidated it should match with the schema that's okay, it okay if the schema match then it can read successfully if the schema okay. doesn't match then it cannot read it that's it okay whatever it matches it only reads that file reads the file. exactly exactly that's okay. it okay 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 so, dinesh in that case uh, when we have to go internal table and when we have to go external table that is you are going to uh, inform me okay i'm just going the examples of the practical outputs based on that we will take the decisions okay <laughs> that's the reason i just create the same path with the internal and external and all. So both tables, right now, it is available in the same path. Maybe. Yeah. What is it? Table in T 31st. Two tables is available. Okay. Now I'm going to drop this table. Okay. Now let me go into see this data. Okay, data is still persist. Now, sorry, D thirty one E. Okay, same. Now I am going to delete internal table. You can see before dropping that external table. After dropping the external table, I can see the data. But while I'm dropping the internal table, I lost my data. Which means in this particular path, whatever the file we just stored, that will be controlled by Hive. Who? Hive. Hive. Hive as a user can control whether this data has to be hold or not. If suppose you are going to declare as an internal table, if you are not declared as an internal table, you just add a keyword external table, then Hive as a user doesn't have access to control these tables and all. This is the difference. Understood? So whenever oh, you are going to create the table, yeah, you just drop the table. Even you drop the See, table, what you I can understood see the data here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what I understood, you no, know, that is, uh, if we using that internal table that uh, uh, stored within the Hive warehouse directory, that is, uh, uh, ownership will be Hive. Am I correct? That is, if we use why, yeah, external... why we, this is we are loaded into different path, right? It's not a data warehouse default path. How it is? Uh, because of the internal data, internal yeah, table. It doesn't follow with the default path. It is followed with your user level access restrictions controls, ACL. Okay. Okay, RBAC, role based access control, we will be providing, right? If suppose you are going to create as an internal table, managed table, then you are providing full access with the data ownership 
on okay. hive. hive if it is an external table only metadata ownership not data ownership that's the difference between internal table and external table okay when we drop that uh, external table that time uh, uh, how it will uh, it is uh, storage is there only replication will create or uh, from the replication it is showing that uh, found on items or um, schema is there that uh, that's why they are showing the table uh, how it will uh, uh, how it is happening the drop already happened that uh, external table but uh, again they, it is showing even if it is in hadoop itself and that storage is in Hadoop itself, external data. Um, the replication inside happened or um, the schema only showing? Replications also followed the file as converted, sorry, the record as converted as a file. Clear, right? While you already provide an insert into statement, what will happen? What okay. are you providing the inputs? That's a record. Record is converted as a file and write into Hadoop environment. Correct. Okay. Okay. From that replication, it is showing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. While writing the data, it just understand and replicate mm -hmm. across your Hadoop cluster wherever the node is available. It just mm -hmm. replicated and from there you are trying to extract it. Correct? Yeah, sure. Yeah. This is happening. So, so, when you, yeah. Then when you delete the external table, you'll um, the metadata will be deleted. What will happen to the original data? Original data for the external table, just keep on listening. This is the original data, right? Metadata only you are deleted while you are going to drop external tables. So will that be orphan then? Um, if, if we delete uh, metadata, we can't access the external uh, the original data, right? You, this data will be released from your hive control. It just fold in your huddle. You cannot access anything with your hive metadata because you, while you are dropping the external table, metadata loss. Mm -hmm. While you're dropping the internal table, managed table, you're losing your metadata and data. Both ownership, you're losing it. That's the example I'm showing you. File is like persisted before. Now it's not available. Both right. of them I just create in, on top of the same path only. While I'm dropping the external table, so internal table, so external table, I still I can see the data. While I'm dropping the external table, internal table, I can uh, lose my data as well here. Not only single file. How many files is load? Everything will be can have access to delete by your uh, internal tables. Though metadata is deleted, uh, can we still access the data for, from external table? You can create one more external table with the same metadata and read it from here. That's possible. Right. So until unless we create a metadata, we cannot access the other table. Yeah. No, we cannot. Okay. What is the use case? You know, when we uh, when do we usually create external table? Do, do you have any real life in a use case or example? Mm, that's we are going to discuss now. Gee, one imagination. If again I delete the external data one more time, I give drop uh, external data uh, same. What will happen? The same thing will replicate again. No, the external table, if you're going to drop the data already hold it, right? So you don't want to worry about it. You can create the table again. That's it. Already all the replication done and it will be ready for you. On okay. top of that, just to create the table metadata references. Am I right? Because you're not losing the data. Already replication done. Hadoop plus to keep listening and wait for your all the references. On top of that, just going to mention the schema and data type. Automatically, you can read it. Suppose you're going to delete the managed table, internal table, if you're going to delete, uh, start dropping it, your data also will be lost. Again, you want to insert the data, again, you want to read the data from there. At the time, new replication is going to be happened. Got it? Okay. Dinesh, uh, if the, once we are creating the table in Hive, the file has been distributed and creating the replica. Correct? Correct. Yeah. So if we delete external table, how the replica and the file has been distributed, it, it will oh. also delete? Yeah, for the external table, who hold that information? Replica and R. Hadoop. Hadoop. Hadoop Hadoop. Only have the external data, Hadoop. Hadoop have all the responsibility, replications okay. and all, right? So mm. if it is an external table, Hadoop give access, read only access to for even high, high user. Okay. So if suppose you are going to drop your tables, 
only read only access so it cannot have access to delete the data from hadoop environment am i right okay for so for internal some, it will delete all the files and yeah. replicas and everything yes yes if it is a internal table hadoop will provide read and write access okay. both to your hive user okay. hive engine so it can able to read and write and delete whatever it can do it okay. that is uh, the difference so then is in hadoop how long it will maintain the metadata and uh, uh, data how long it will maintain even hadoop if we delete it maintaining in data okay. not metadata metadata separately maintained that is the reason i just showing the architecture right metadata separately hold by your okay. hadoop clusters data only hold by your hadoop clusters whenever required you have to declare the column name table name everything you want to create it here that you are trying to read via hive engine uh, on that that's it clear okay actually my question is suppose if i delete the uh, data in hive uh, mm. how long the data will maintain in hadoop Hadu? like uh, one week or uh, one month or Oh, yeah, yeah, suppose you delete any... from Hadoop, so you have to maintaining some uh, cache stages. If you are not declaring it, then whenever you delete, auto at the time itself, you are losing your data. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Like that one, it decided because you know very well to delete the data. If you are going to delete the data, it's kind of memory card you can consider. You have a hard disk, right? If you delete, mm -hmm. what will happen? it will delete yeah entirely it's just going to be deleted delete, yeah yeah same like here as well mm -hmm. i'm okay. just going to be communicate and read the data whenever you're shooting the query okay mm. meta store mm. separate data separate you're shooting the query to read the data from through hive engine at the time i'm going to communicate with the metadata uh, for this table okay this is the table name he provide provide all the reference information just gather from your hive meta store everything gathered and then it just going to be communicated with your hadoop cluster and create as a job and execute on our top of your files and read entire data okay and finally send back that final output to your hive driver again okay. Okay. This is repeatedly happening. Okay. So here, what I'm trying to point here, manage table have ownership with. J, sorry, one more. Uh, data. Yeah. Plus metadata. Yeah, just a minute. I just completed. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. But external table. with metadata there is a difference this is the major difference okay clear you okay. can able to delete only the metadata manage table can delete metadata and data both understood Will there be any uh, differences in the execution or performance between internal and the external table? Performance is no differences because both will be created as a jobs only, right? Here. So safer side, we can always choose external table. Mm. Uh, okay, yeah, you are coming to the point. That is, I am trying to say. So if you want to save your data, very secure data, then you must create all of the table with external. Most in real time, ninety percent people are ninety five percent projects. People are trying to create all that table as external. In interview, they may be going to confuse you whether you are using external table or internal table. Confidently says you are using external tables because what will happen? You are the user. I am the user. I am working for accounting department, and you are working for customer department. Both have to read the same data at runtime. So both have the data references and schema references. If anybody going to delete any data, others will get impact much. Am I right? This is going to be happening. So that's the reason they will be keep on maintaining all the data with a secure way. On top of that, they are going to handling with your reference spaces. But when we can go with 
internal table like the also in interview they may be going to raise a question so do you have any idea when we are going to use internal table like a full dump data if you are going to load we can for an example the, some temporary tables like that no you are the end to end responsibility with the data you are doing some poc and you are only have allocated to that poc without any dependencies that you can go with internal table if any dependencies matter then you have to go with external table got it okay mm -hmm. So it's only for the testing purpose or some temporary? Only your purpose. dependency, your team and you, the, you're only going to handle it. If data losses, no issues with your business, then that kind of situation, you will go with internal table. Otherwise, you have to go with external table. Mostly dependency relationships and the data importance, then you must go with external table. Got it? Dinesh? Uh, uh, if uh, we are creating another table using the same file, mm. so it will not again distribute and rep create replica of uh, the same file in the Hadoop. No, it's already hold uh, on oh, top of the. Oh, it is already created, created. so it, it will not go into create again. Exactly. Okay. You just hold on top of that as a file references. That's it. Okay. It's like a just a wrapper. Am I right? Clear. Okay. Any Can other I... question, guys? It's like a folder. In the particular folder, you're creating multiple shortcuts, right? That shortcut folders are like a tables. The actual path, it just redirect always. Am I right? So all the shortcut folders is a kind of table references, external tables. The main particular path, you're holding all the data. So how many shortcuts you create? That many is a table. You may be imagined. Okay. Can I create multiple um, schemas to access um, uh, one external table? Depends on your data. You can maybe next example we will see that things. Okay, already time out. Maybe next example I may be going to create one table with a, a different schema. Another one is a different schema. How it is behave? That mm -hmm. we will see in the next examples. Okay. okay. Okay, guys. Any other questions? Yeah. In the uh, one of the uh, that is uh, one person is asking how many days that uh, about that uh, retention time he is asking that uh, according to the retention policy policy uh, that uh, how you will be control um, the retention policy and all or uh, that uh, that metadata uh, that that will be control the um, the retention policy uh, because no specific retention policy, but in Hadoop, you can mention some retentions to hold the data for some time. But people are not focusing with the retention periods and all because that's the data importance. They know very well. They have to create the tables and all, right? They will not be executed that RM command immediate. If any chances they are going to create the internal table on top of that, they may be facing a lot of challenges, even though they are maintaining that data in that different way. Okay. If, uh, if, data be... is the, uh, if data is in historical data, or for example, uh, we are keeping the data as a historical record of data, the yeah. time that uh, we, we have to use that retrieve the data from there, uh, that um, that uh, retention it has on some of the retention they have written that according that they will we can use the partitioning and all another that is uh, we have to give usually that partitioning purpose we are giving the retention time and all uh, in code itself uh, no, uh, we don't have like that we don't have any parameter like that okay we cannot, we, while you are delete the data it's mm. just going to be low, uh, right into temp path for some time after that just released from there also from there also that's going to be happen but depends on your data sizes it's just going to be modified there is no special keywords to keep on maintaining return retentions with your hive tables okay who will look after that life cycle policy for in high high work hadoop, hadoop by default because you are writing the data hadoop will take care of the responsibility that's the okay. reason you are trying to create a external table if supposed to create an external table you will not be losing any data right Okay, so is, it, it, it has two control is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if it is in Hadoop uh, cluster, that Yarn control will, uh, Yarn is a cluster manager. Hive is a control manager here. 
there is uh, only that uh, quarry that sql and all will look after that hive that uh, uh, hadoop related cluster manager and all yarn will look after am i correct in name node and yarn yeah, name node can control the data sizes and uh, replication and all yarn will control the resources okay okay now understood okay 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 in the okay, latest yes. question of hive uh, is it can you perform you can update uh, your yeah, record in the latest version of hive okay is there any I way you can update uh, here for example using update statement like how you do in rdbms that's a as it property we can enable with hive 3 expression even hive 2 also with some table property changes we can do it but mostly people are not touching up because a lot of changes you have to do it in the back end so mostly update operation they will be handled by incremental basis is it type 1 type 2 right based on that they yeah. will be handled like it uh so can because we if suppose actually... you are going to modify that update transaction with the data mm -hmm. entire hadoop cluster is going to be modified block okay. size is going to be modified replication mm -hmm. factor is going to be modified name node will get lot of burden so they are not doing like that they will be following with incremental basis okay uh, not possible how to achieve a cd is it possible a cd achieve a cd let's in in incremental incremental basis we can achieve it Okay. So okay, according sure. to the record separate, you can load it, and based on the timestamp references, you can extract the data immediate. Like that, you can do it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, guys. Already we are uh, close to the time. Uh, one last question. Like, mm. yeah. So more, what my understanding is now, I understood like what Hive does. So, uh. So when we have managed table and external table and what Hive role is about. Uh, so when it goes to, when the data is in yarn or mean, uh, how it happens, like what data node has, what name node has. So those will come be explained. Again. Come again. Oh, what, you know about Hadoop cluster, right? Yeah, Hadoop cluster, I know, but I mean, what it will have, I mean, here, I, I understood like in Hadoop cluster, the performance I mean, uh, we are pulling the data and I mean, we, like, we will have the data in Hadoop cluster now. Mm. So what this yarn does and what this resource manager does? Next session, we are going to discuss the Hadoop comments and basics or uh, architecture and all. At the time, I will give you some inputs. Just give me yeah, some yeah. time. I just I mean, I yeah. want to know like whether we will know. I will, I will. Yeah. Next topic, it should be a commands related and uh, um, the Hadoop architecture as well. I will give you some inputs. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thanks. Okay, guys. Any other question? One more question. Yeah, this Excellent record will be. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this record will be shared in Drive or uh, yesterday I sent a YouTube. Uh, regularly we can. Today, see yesterday and today it should be in common places in our YouTube channel. After that, it will be hold in our recording mm -hmm. path only. That's where okay. I have access to only. Okay. Okay. The actual uh, demonstration, so I would like to show you. Yeah. Adinesh, as I said earlier, actually, I'm new into this IDE and all. Uh, yeah. I need to know where I have to uh, open and what are the menus like that. Uh, so, in next session, if you uh, open uh, after our session start, it will help me. Where is this data node? The, uh, yeah, node and all so many things you opened right previously, like so many ports. I will, I will show you, we will go in detail. We will not yeah, discuss yeah. about Hadoop in detail, okay? Hadoop architecture. I would like okay. to go that uh, back end architecture right now with Hive, okay? We will okay. do some commands with Hadoop and that architecture. At the time, I will tell you. Thanks, give me some time. Okay, so today's session is interesting. Yes, super cheap. Okay, guys. So, I hope I have answered all the questions. I have missed it. Almost time up. So, next week we will be continue the further topics and we will go in detail as well. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. For... Okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry. I have one question. Sorry, sorry, come again. Uh, when we are going to install the software, this Hive and uh, Hadoop. Uh, so actually, uh, is... as of 
batch is uh, free so then i will give you the first priority with installation and all and then we will go forward so i will give you that so maximum this next week we are going to freeze the batch and then immediately first we are going with all your installations and deployment and all and we'll start immediate with assignments okay okay, okay understood. yeah uh Dinesh, actually this python notebook or this one we need to have it or uh, meanwhile everything will be set up by default with your enrollment so no oh. problem just install docker in your system that's enough okay okay is, is there any version no latest also to be support don't worry about it just okay. to download and install docker desktop that's it Thanks. Okay, that is also a little bit troubleshoot we have to do in some places for some of them. We will take care. Once the, uh, until, just wait for until the batch freeze and we'll start separate WhatsApp group we have already created, right? So we'll mm -hmm. be started there. We'll be start all the further activities with the best. Don't worry about it. Okay? Yeah. Thanks. Okay, guys. Uh, Dinesh, you yeah. uh, can you tell me the fee structure? Wow. Already informed. Until whoever is paying today, just a twenty-four thousand, you can pay by two installment. Whoever is paying by next week, that should be a twenty-six thousand. Uh, so, for people who are in abroad, uh, we can't use GP or account account things. number. Yeah, right. Uh, account number. I don't have. Is it okay if I can ping you? Personally? Just text me. I will help you in that. Just text me in private WhatsApp group. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, I have that number right. I just shared you. Just text me. I will help you in that. Don't worry. Is it the number that starts with plus nine six? No, 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 not no. That's uh, I'm in uh, Saudi Arabia right now. Okay. Um, so that's the number. You just contact another one number as well. Okay, sure. Thank right, you. Sir. That one double zero. It end with one zero. Just uh, okay. text me to that. Okay, sure. Thank you. Okay, thank you all. Thank you. Next session was. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dinesh. It was a nice session. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Dinesh, I have one small query. Mm. Uh, actually, one of my colleagues, uh, his uh, background is belongs to a uh, college professor. Mm. Uh, you yeah, have basic knowledge in Python uh, to use the Python, the query You have yeah, the basic knowledge, uh, not uh, intermediate expert mm -hmm. level. Uh, okay. But it seems this course is for experienced person. Or, not uh, not uh, like that. Yeah. Just to okay. uh, share my number, I will discuss with them. Uh, okay. Uh, actually, he, he actually participated yesterday, but mm. he felt like uh, uh, like so many experienced guys are there. It seems uh, uh, I felt uh, I did not know. Even a fresher is joining here. He know the programming, right? That's enough. That's more than enough. We will take care. Of it. No, you know how to use Python, how to use the Jupyter, uh, that and all. But uh, mm. uh, uh, apart uh, apart from that, uh, actually we don't have idea. It seems so. No he, he is asking like uh, they are they will teach from the basics or directly to the uh, intermediate or advanced level. He asked me. How do you feel today's session? Is it advanced level or is it basic? No, according level? to no, according to me, I am okay. But uh, I don't know. Maybe Person, I will share, just share this demo video to him. We just go through uh, with that, and then he will take okay. the decision. I'm not forcing okay. him. Okay? okay, he will take the decision. Uh, uh, I will ask him to talk with you also. His name is Kali Mutro. Oh, okay, fine. Uh, actually, he's more interested. Actually, uh, he's a professor around 25 years experience. And he want to switch over the career or uh, uh, in his career itself, he want to uh, develop his uh, uh, or in the same career, it seems. And he want no, to learn no. the language. That's why we, we will try our best and worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, his name is Kali Mutra. He will uh, call you. Yeah. In, in, yeah, just text okay. to my number that uh, one zero is sent, right? Ah, okay, we'll okay, okay. We will discuss. Okay. So in my name, in, in, uh, uh, my name is Srivash. Uh, mm. My name, I will, I will, I refer him. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yeah. I will, I will discuss with them. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, hi, Dinesh. Hi, Rek. Ah, hi, Dinesh. So, it's a request from my side. Actually, I know about the basics of Hadoop and everything. So, I request you to go with the flow of whatever class you are handling. Because some people interact, intervene, and they ask about the advanced topic. <laughs> Don't worry. Just give me some time. You also need to reach to them. First layer, I am trying to match everyone at the same level.
that's okay. my motive you also will reach to that level definitely in some time then you will be think mm-hmm. everyone at same because yes, i know no. few of them join as a freshers few of them non technical mm-hmm. background and few of them is a very new to this environment i know and few of them is advanced level everything we have to come into the same bridge it's a equal weightage we have to maintain it and okay. i will, I will try me <laughs> don't worry yeah. about it i know very well i will be handle it uh, okay. uh, sorry to say this i never missed the concept i never missed the concept i will uh. be trying to meet, meet everyone the same bridge so don't worry okay. We, okay that's we have a uh, monitors uh, so so don't because worry I, today, today okay, but... i have been talking about the yarn resource myself i can know the basics of yarn so so the next session i am going to detail drive with the yarn how to come as and all so you will get some more clarity don't worry about it okay, i will okay. understand where it's going on i know that length as well i will be keep on monitor and i don't like to disappoint them as well right as a trainer they have some knowledge they are trying to share with you i have to manage everything at the same level so okay, i'm okay. trying don't worry next session we are going to discuss that in detail Sure, okay. sure. Thank you, thank you. That's the reason we are mentioning this is the concept level, not the time basis. We will be following here. Okay, okay, okay. I will take it. Okay, sure. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you.